continue as the D in Big D stands for developing situation. Dak Prescott's tenure in Dallas may all of a sudden be in some semblance of question with the acquisition of Trey Lance and all the way that it's been handled. Yesterday, in talking about it, our beloved former Cowboy Marcus Spears went through a variety of emotions. This is exactly what I needed, by the way, uh, at the beginning of the NFL football season. I needed Jerry Jones to do Jerry Jones. Mm -hmm. the, the NFL <laughs> season starts in a week. Right. We've questioned if Dak Prescott is going to be the quarterback. <laughs> like, I can't make this up. I cannot <laughs> make this up. He brought up Jerry Jalen Hurts, and he traded for Trey Lance from the San Francisco 49ers. Man, I can't, I can't bring another woman to my house and tell my wife, listen, she ain't my girlfriend. She ain't, I don't plan on marrying her, but she got to stay with us. And I didn't talk to you about it because I'm the boss. Come on, man, what are we talking about? The analogy is genius as only the big swag who can make it. Orlovsky, Harry, Kmart, I'm Greeny. Let's talk about this. Dan, we've been dancing around this now for three days. I'm going to ask you the question directly. And I understand the season hasn't begun. We <laughs> hope Dak Prescott has a wonderful year. We all like him. I don't think anyone doesn't like him. But that's not what this is about. Do, is it reasonable to say that Dak Prescott, when you consider his contract and everything else, is playing for his time in Dallas this coming season? It's reasonable to say that. I would be shocked if in 2024 Dak Prescott is not the starting quarterback of the Cowboys. I, you say that? I I'd be shocked. I think because, one, I am under the impression and my expectation is Dak Prescott plays to a level that we are way more accustomed to seeing in his career. I think Dak Prescott throws for 4,000 plus yards and, you know, 26 to 32 touchdowns and doesn't give the football away 17 times, including the playoffs. I expect this to be a playoff football team, and we're going to see what Dak does in that playoff moment. I don't care what happened against Tampa Bay in the playoffs. Um, I, I, I care about what happened the last two years against San Francisco in the playoffs. But if Dak Prescott goes and performs to that level, the Cowboys are not going to move on from Dak and turn a Super Bowl caliber roster over to a Trey Lance or a free agent like a Sam Darnold. They're just not going to do that because it is going to be easier for them to get worse at quarterback than it is going to be for them to get better. So while I'm not sitting here trying to pretend that I haven't said what I've said over the last five or six years about Dak, <laughs> he's a good player. They paid great player money to him. That's their fault, not mine. So I think he plays good football this year. I don't think that they can find as of right now, a better player that's going to be available. So Agreed. I'd be shocked if he's not their quarterback in 24. Oh, uh, Daniel, I agree with you. They will be worse next year if Dak is not their quarterback. But I'm shocked as a former NFL quarterback that you would say, I'm, I'd be shocked if he's not on the team. So look at around the league. Crazier things have happened. And you keep saying if. If Dak goes out and balls, if he delivers them to the promised land of D a deep playoff run, of course, if. But right now, do you feel as you've watched his career in Dallas, do you feel as though I understand they gave him big money, but do you feel that they are in love with Dak the way a franchise should be in love with their dude? No. no. Exactly. And that is why that that hesitation, the qualifications, Greeny, when people say, well, it's not it's not that Dak is a bad quarterback. It's not that the guy's a bum. It's not that he's a scrub. <laughs> it's like, why are why are people doing all of the all of the right. qualifiers like Dak is a good, very good quarterback. And Kimberly, they would be I worse if they didn't have him next year. But let's not be we can't act like we'd be shocked if this I'd season plays out. Because I, 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 let me let me say this, Cameron, that, and I said this at the end of last year. I think everybody wants the player to match the person. It, it, like every, we know that he is a tremendous character, yes. and yes. they want the performance of the player to match that. The reason I say shocked is this, because that would mean that a guy that we've seen play pretty good football over the course of his career would have to have two pretty poor years in a row. 
Mm -hmm. And that would be surprising to me, given right. the player that he is and the people that are around him when it comes to talent level. That's why I would be shocked about it. I, I would not go anywhere near the word shocked. I have seen far more surprising yes. things happen than that would be. It is not my expectation. I expect right. Dak Prescott right. to play much better, but I certainly don't think that it would be that shocking. We watched him play on the franchise tag for that team, which generally never happens. Let me ask the question a different way. Mm -hmm. We talk about quarterbacks and that third-year jump that they make and all that sort of thing. Dak Prescott is 30 years old, mm -hmm. and I feel like we are still waiting for him to take that last step, mm -hmm. the step that separates the very good from the truly exceptional, the step that separates the guys who carry a team on their back to the ones you simply win with. Is that still there? It, it, with a lot of other guys, I feel like we would say, if we don't see it in year three, mm -hmm. we're ready to give up. We can write the book. This is what this player is. Is there another level Dak Prescott is capable of taking this I to? I think he's capable of doing it. And it's, uh, I agree with Dan. I don't think Dak is going to have two back-to-back, -back, you know, seasons like he had mm -hmm. on 15 interceptions in 12 games last right. year. Yeah. But, Greeny, I was on here a few weeks ago when mm -hmm. I said, when it came to Dak Prescott, now, in his career, it's about those moments, mm -hmm. right? In those moments uh, against the San Francisco 49ers in the second round or against the San Francisco 49ers in the first round. Will he be able to make those plays? I think he's capable of making them. Now it's just going out there and executing. Because at the end of the day, the Dallas Cowboys can't have Dak Prescott being the reason why mm -hmm. they're not advancing. Mm -hmm. right. that, that's the reason why we're having this conversation, because the last few years, Dak Prescott has been the reason why mm -hmm. the Dallas Cowboys haven't moved on within the playoffs. Hey, hey, Danny, do you know what, did you see what Dak Prescott wore to practice one day last week in support of his old guy? He wore Ezekiel Elliott's yeah, wore, old Ohio yeah. State jersey the other day. We keep talking yes. about how the Cowboys are going to want to be a play-action team this year and run the ball. Can someone let me know exactly who it is that's going to be doing all this running with the ball for them in Dallas? Yeah. Is it going to be Tony Pollard? Because if it's going to be Tony Pollard, they're going to get him broken in half by the middle of October. Is it going to be Deuce Vaughn? I'm still trying to figure out who it is that's going to be toting this rock for the Dallas Cowboys the way they want to play this offense. Dak Prescott, if they're going to have a big season, is going to be expected to fling it to the receivers they have all over the field. And if he's flinging it, you know that means, Danny, he's putting it in harm's way. Let's see what happens. This whole idea that this is going to be a different Dallas offense does not make sense to me when I look at the personnel. Yeah, I agree with that, Greeny, and that's kind of why we had attached so many of the backs that were in the conversations to the Dallas Cowboys. I don't think they're going to be flinging it around the football field, though. Now, I, don't, I don't look at this defense or this football team that different than I look at the Jets, Greeny. I've said this. The Jets' defense is going to give up like 15 points a game. It's mm -hmm. relatively similar with Dallas if they play the way that they have the last two years. So there's not going to be a ton of pressure on this offense to have to go score 30 to 35 points a game. I agree with Harry. I, I've said this, like – if, if it goes the way that we kind of expect it to, Dallas is going to be playing a playoff game in the first week of January or the mm -hmm. second week of January. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens then. Because here's the thing, Greeny. One of two things is going to happen. If they're not playing in January, I'll, I'll retract my statement, okay? If they're not playing in January and there's no catastrophic injuries, I would not be shocked if he's not the quarterback next year, okay? Yeah. I would not be shocked by that. But right. If they're playing in January, let's see what happens. Let's just see what happens because this is a team – that is plenty capable of beating the Philadelphia Eagles and the San Francisco 49ers or the New York Giants or the Detroit Lions. But it'll come down to their quarterback valuing the football and then making that play in the biggest of moments. That's what it'll come down to. And I know that's cliche and I know that's surface level and all, but that's just the truth of their situation. So I, I, without trying to be a Monday Dan take person, let's just <laughs> kind of see how this all plays out when we get to those moments. I'm with all of that. All right, let me leave that there for the moment. We'll do more of it. But right now, it is our second installment of our brand new feature that is sweeping the nation. It is called <laughs> That Boy Bad.